On October 21st, 2018, GitHub's data center technicians were performing some routine maintenance work in their East Coast network. This included the data center itself, as well as a hub, which allowed the data center to talk to the rest of the network, such as the corresponding West Coast data center and hub, cloud infrastructure, public internet, and various other systems. During the maintenance, there was some operational mishap, severing connectivity to the hub, creating a network partition between the East Coast data center and everything else. This was pretty bad as GitHub just lost half of their servers. Fortunately, the maintenance crew managed to restore the connection in 43 seconds. Perhaps someone simply flipped the wrong switch or unplugged something by accident. In the end, GitHub ran slowly for a minute or so, no one noticed, and life moved on. At least that's what should have happened. Instead, after connectivity was restored, GitHub would experience an additional 24 hours of service degradation, where users couldn't log in, stale data was served, and the website was pretty much in read-only mode. According to this calculation graciously provided by a random internet user, over a billion dollars of productivity was wasted. Now what happened in these 43 seconds to get us into this situation? Did some engineer's manual intervention cause the impact? Perhaps it was related to a move to Microsoft Azure. Well, to start, let's take a look at how GitHub's database works. GitHub stores all its metadata such as issues, pull requests, comments, notifications, actions in MySQL. On the surface, their database clusters use the standard primary replica setup. Writes go to the primary, which replicates to one or more read replicas. These replicas improve read throughput and availability as reads can be distributed throughout all replicas, and if the primary fails, a fellow replica can be promoted to take its place. GitHub has many services and features, and to maintain separation of concerns, this inevitably requires many database clusters, each having its designated primary. All primaries were in the East Coast data center, with replicas spread across both coasts. Certain replicas in the West functioned as intermediate primaries, or in other words, a replica can have replicas which can have more replicas. This may seem dumb and overcomplicated, but there are a few advantages here. In terms of cost, a single replication layer means a lot of cross data center traffic, which is very expensive. With an intermediate primary, the cross data center hop is only performed once. We also reduce load on the primary as it only replicates to its direct descendants. GitHub has a homegrown tool to manage all of this called Orchestrator, which comes with a UI to help visualize and manage database topologies. You can even drag and drop replicas around wherever you want. Most importantly though, it supports automatic primary failover. Rather than paging a human to wake up to fix a dead primary, Orchestrator will automatically fail over and promote a new primary, ideally within 30 seconds. So Orchestrator servers are set up both on-premises and in the cloud to monitor the database. Then there are certain rules for when a failover can occur. If Orchestrator is unable to contact a primary, it does nothing, because it's possible that Orchestrator itself is the problem. But if it detects that replicas are also unable to contact the primary, such as in a dead master and some replicas fail in your state, it will trigger a failover and automatically reorganize the database topology. The caveat here is that if Orchestrator is not configured carefully, it can implement topologies which the application doesn't support. Now let's go back to the beginning and see exactly what went down in those fateful 43 seconds. First, the most recent writes to the East Coast were yet to be replicated to the West Coast, and the severed connection caused this replication lag to persist. This meant the East Coast clusters now contain data not present in the West Coast. Next, for a few seconds, writes would time out and fail as traffic could not reach the primaries. Then, orchestrator nodes in the West Coast data center and US East Cloud established quorum to fail over, since the primaries were unreachable to both orchestrator and the replicas. Therefore, replicas in the US West database, most likely the intermediate primaries, were promoted to be the new primaries and write traffic was redirected accordingly. Now that the West Coast was receiving traffic while the East Coast was still in isolation, both the East and West Coast databases contained unique writes not present in the other. So to summarize, after the connection was restored, the primaries were now shifted to the West Coast, and the two data centers contained inconsistent data. However, despite the restored connection, Orchestrator did not put the East Coast clusters back into the replication topology. Think of it like a timeline, or perhaps more on topic, like git commit history. The east and west branches are currently diverged with different data, so any further commits to the west may conflict with the east. 
so for now the East Coast database was kind of just sitting there doing nothing. By this point, two minutes after the initial outage, several engineers had hopped on to triage the issue. They noticed that latency metrics for many services had spiked up considerably. Manually verifying by going on the website themselves, they saw firsthand that it was extremely laggy. Soon enough, Down Detector began reporting issues and Redditors began complaining. Once they saw a cross data center failover was triggered, the root cause became clear. You may be thinking, isn't the failover a good thing that Orchestrator was designed to do? But in this case, it was a cross-region failover, something that had never happened before. Many of their applications ran exclusively on the East Coast and were not designed to write to the West Coast database. Services like Jobs and the GitHub.com front end cannot cope with the cross-country latency, rendering GitHub unusable for many users. Now the engineers were stuck between a rock and a hard place. The current state of writing to the west coast meant extreme lag in an unusable website. They could reverse the situation and fail back to the east coast, but due to the divergent timeline discussed previously, this would require removing the west coast from service. But given that the west coast had received 40 minutes of writes by this point, a bunch of users would see their data suddenly disappear. Nevertheless, some engineers believed failing back was the correct option. The alternative, which we will get to later, would put GitHub in this degraded state for many hours at best. 40 minutes of writes is a fine sacrifice for the greater good. Furthermore, they could always save these writes and reconcile them later. Most disagreed, however, data integrity is paramount. The website might be running slowly, but making customer data disappear is pretty much the worst thing you can do. Well, the inconsistent data was only getting worse as they spent time deliberating over what to do. Given it was now more like 60 minutes of writes, GitHub decided to prioritize data integrity over speed of recovery and site usability. They disabled certain features like webhooks and GitHub pages builds to prevent further database impacts and began drafting up a plan which went as follows. 1. They were going to fail forward, that is, continue with US West as the primary for the time being, and only switch back after fully synchronizing the East Coast clusters. This should theoretically ensure a seamless experience for users as everything will be up to date by the time the East Coast is reintroduced into the topology. Synchronizing the East Coast required a restore from backup, we need to roll the East Coast cluster back in time to a common point and restart replication from there. Of course, before doing this, they also made sure to save the unreplicated writes to manually reconcile later. GitHub's MySQL backups occurred every 4 hours but were stored remotely in the cloud and would take hours to decompress, prepare, and load. This procedure was tested daily, so the recovery time frame was well understood, but this was the first time they had to rebuild entire clusters from backup. Anyways, this was going to take a while, so they began the backup restore process and checked for ways to speed up the transfer in the meantime. Six hours later, several clusters were restored and up to date with the West Coast replication. By this point, they found ways to speed up the process by restoring directly from the West Coast rather than cloud storage, and the engineers were confident that recovery was imminent. The rest of the clusters were replicating quickly, and they projected that everything would be good in two hours or so. An hour later and 8 hours into the event, GitHub published a blog post to provide context of what was going on. This took a while to set up because they used GitHub pages internally for such blogs, and they had shut down GitHub pages earlier to reduce database pressure. Should've just streamed the recovery process on YouTube. Three hours later, all the East Coast clusters had at least one up-to-date replica, so the engineers could fail back all primaries to the East. I assume they had established some process to fail back quickly, since they believed full recovery was imminent. However, this had backfired since not all the US East replicas had caught up and some were still multiple hours behind. This meant that depending on which read replica a customer request hit, they could see very outdated results. This situation was kind of what GitHub was trying to avoid, but sometimes things just don't work out as you expect. Their recovery estimate was very off as they expected the replication to follow a linear trajectory rather than the actually observed power function. Furthermore, by this point, the Europeans and Americans were waking up and slamming the database even harder. 
Another five hours later, everything was finally in sync, and the original topology was restored. It was now time for step five of the master plan. Remember when they turned off webhooks and page builds? Well, now they had over 5 million webhook events and 80,000 page builds in the queue to process. Processing this backlog of data went mostly smoothly, but took a while. Seven hours later, a bit over 24 hours after the momentary maintenance mishap, GitHub was back to normal and the site status was updated to green. They also applied the unreplicated East Coast rights they had saved previously, reaching out to customers when necessary. The technical initiatives here are clear. Orchestrators' capabilities need to be rethought. In this case, the cross-region failover was not supported by the application. In the short term, they could simply turn this functionality off. Next, a point I mostly glossed over was that many users were in the dark throughout the outage about what worked and what didn't work. In the future, GitHub would establish a crisper and clearer reporting mechanism. Third, a long-term goal was to allow the application to tolerate a full failure of a single data center with no impact. In essence, to make cross data center failovers actually safe. Lastly, we have a generic will do better statement. Quiz time. What do GitHub employees call themselves? All right, time's up. The correct answer is Hubbers. In contrast to GitLab's two-server DB1, DB2 setup in 2017, GitHub's architecture here was much more mature. But with great scale comes great complexity. Come back in 2047 when Bitbucket's lunar data center failure causes extreme latency as the terrestrial hardware was incapable of communicating with the Martian data center without the extra hop at the moon, causing the failsafe mechanism to launch the backup lunar proxy which had its calculation incorrectly done using inches instead of centimeters, so it veered off course into the primary US East data center which caused a new primary to be promoted on Mars, exacerbating the latency of services running on Earth, and eventually bringing down Bitbucket entirely as it could not handle writing through this interplanetary loop. 